Ursula is the managing director of the British American Business Council of New England. Awesome. And we get Adam. Hey, how's it going, guys? Just, just, just jumping on. How's it going? Getting, getting good. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, Thanks I'm not bad. <laughs> Joining us, Ursula. Ursula is the managing director. Sorry, that's me. British American. <laughs> I just started a live stream on YouTube, so that's why. Oh, wow. So Adam um, is a, a, a writer and a comedian. Is that right to say, Adam? Almost. Do you know, so I, I'm, this, I'm the creative director of a, of a company called White Label Comedy. So I'm not a comedy writer, but I have a fuck ton of them in my back pocket. Um, so what, what we do basically is resource um, brands with comedy content. So yeah, it's, it's wow. the simplest way to think of it is I'm a comedy writer. Certainly that's, that's what I deliver people. But yeah, well, interesting yeah. times for comedy right now. That's exciting, Adam. We actually were talking through this yesterday how to make it more fun today, today's experience. You know, how to <laughs> oh. humor. Well, so I, we'll I can't promise. I... We'll, we'll ask you to give us feedback so we can get, like, make it better next time. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, like, I can't promise to have any jokes to wheel out, but certainly uh, I might have some thoughts. Oh, you, you, you're good. You're good. So we'll ask, uh, we'll ask our, our, our guests to, you know, to tell us funny stories and then make jokes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So you're not in the spot. No worries. All right, so we have uh, Helen. Hello. You're mute, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're just yeah. testing. Oh. Hi, Helen. Thanks for joining Hi. us. So, uh, Helen was on, uh, it's not a trade mission, right? You can't call it a trade mission um, to the US uh, a, a few months ago. Um, February. And I don't know if you want to explain what that trip was, real quick. and. Uh, so we, we spent um, the week at Babson College um, doing lots of learning with um, a company called Enterprise Made Simple um, from the UK and we attended lots of networking events and just kind of got a flavour for um, you guys and how things are different and doing lots of learning and it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. That was great. Yeah. All right, so Shen, uh, Rich, what do you think? Should we should we start or give like Fox a couple more minutes to join? I mean, I, I think we probably should just go ahead and start. I'll just uh, also James Lane is here. Um, James, he's also lives in the UK, and uh, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself at all, or you're welcome to. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you've covered pretty much all of it. Um, <laughs> my, my name's James. I live in the UK, um, and uh, I, I, I run a, a digital skills training agency. So I'm a, I'm a nerd. Uh, well, a lot of people on this on this call can relate to that, James. You're a good company here. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Safe space. All right. Um, yeah. So let's let's then. Oh, I like how we started, guys. So we we don't have a script. I mean, we were thinking about sequencing. So and the roles. So we had we had that that covered, but it really great to see that you know we are making it work as a kind of conversation. You know, it's not just uh, someone from outside talks about our experience. So I will keep it this way. So we'll have maybe kind of uh, first half of this of this hour uh, learning from the experience of Kim and Lorenzo, who uh, by nature of the allocation, let's say, have had a longer exposure to what we are here in Boston and uh, you folks in UK are experiencing right now. Uh, so that's uh, that, that's why we have this list of questions that uh, that Richard has posted on, on LinkedIn, and then the second half of this of this of this uh, meeting will will dedicate to you. So we'll open it up for for questions, and we'll try to make it as interactive as, as possible. How about that? Sounds great to me. Uh, All right, Rich, to you. Uh, so just a quick just rundown of the British American Young Professionals Group. Um, we do kind of a series of roundtables throughout uh, the year. Um, and this was kind of our new approach to kind of keeping up that, that round table and also keeping up um, uh, the community that we've built and also expanding it. So this is our first kind of webinar and, and live stream. And it's, um, it's actually kind of broadened the group a little bit more to be able to reach out to kind of in this wild time that we're in, we're actually able to reach out to more people, which is interesting. Um, I, I think, and so Andre and I are both um, uh, co-chairs along with uh, two other people or three other people um, of the Young Professionals Group here in New England. Um, and 
Um, I think if it's all right, if I, I will let our host Kim and Lorenzo just introduce who they are um, and a little bit of their background, and then we can start asking some questions from there. Um, Kim, do you want to start? Sure. As, uh, as Richard said, my name is Kim. I am currently li living in Los Angeles, which has been hit pretty well or pretty badly by COVID-19. I've been working from home since August last year already. I work remotely. I'm a science consultant, which basically means I help biotech companies build their scientific pipelines, getting any type of asset or drug they have towards clinical trials and patients as soon as possible. And anything I do in that space is extremely varied. My clients are extremely varied. Um, and I, I'm quite flexible in what I do and where I do it from. I'm often on the road for conferences, making relationships there, um, and then taking the work back, lots of business development. Awesome. Rich, you're in here. But yeah, we'll, we'll take it. Thank you so much, Kim. Uh, Lawrence, what about you? Yeah, my name is Lawrence, of course. Uh, actually, uh, I, I have run, started and run uh, with colleagues a very small business here in Italy, which is a small startup. Uh, we actually, our mission is uh, to replace single-use plastic cups in large events with uh, flexible, indestructible cups like this, which have a particularity because each of our cups have a tag, an NFC tag in the bottom, which identifies the cup. So when you reach the, the place where you're actually enjoying the, the night or the day, you can read the tag through the application that we develop and accessing a lot of things, a lot of fun things that you can do. You can interact with the people also at the event. You can buy drink, skipping lines, you can receive information and updates while you count how much plastic you're saving. Every time you drink, we can actually communicate to all the world that we're actually saving a little, a little piece of plastic. So this is what we do in life. And usually we're used to do it, me personally, wandering around between the factory, customers, um, financial activities in general, so banks and investors, and of course, events. So we work in events. <laughs> we were used to work into <laughs> large events. Uh, so now the life is quite different now. Yeah. We all started quite a new type of life, a new deal. Exactly, exactly, guys. So it's exciting to see that both of you uh, change the world, you know, to make it a better place from, from different angles. Uh, so that's, that's, that's great. And it sounds like you've had a great deal of experience uh, working from home before even this whole uh, mayhem started. So my uh, first question to you guys is uh, what is different now uh, compared to how you worked uh, from, from home before? Sure, should I take that first? Yeah, go ahead. I think that the biggest difference for me is that just knowing those are two big differences. One is knowing I can leave my house normally. I can work in coffee shops. I can meet up with friends and work together. Whereas now, of course, that isn't a possibility in Los Angeles at all. Um, that, that's one big part. The other big part is how that affects both my social environment and my clients, that they also can't do that. And I think that's a, a very big part of the change right now is not just work focused anymore in terms of get the deliverables, meet the milestones, finish your projects. But and now it's also reach out to others. Are they okay? Um, social isolation, of course, something that affects the human species a lot. Um, so I do take extra time out of my day to reach out to friends, to reach out even to clients, see how they're doing. How can I help out with this environment right now? Do they have any additional needs I couldn't have foreseen otherwise? So I think that's a big difference for me is that I know that I can't leave my house and that my clients and friends and family can't do it either. Right. Thank you, Kim. Lorenzo, how about you? How about you? Uh, actually, we our office is the house. So because we don't have a lot of money, we live all, we're free people. We live in a big loft, in a big open space, which is here. So on the lower floor, it's the office. On the upper floor is the rooms. Actually, it's already a month I'm alone because my colleagues are back to their own uh, uh, houses. Uh, but actually, it's quite different. It's the same place, same exact Seat where I sit is now is actually where I usually work. It's my office, but it's very different because, um, in a sense, um, we do not have the chance to keep to receive some empirical answers to our theoretical questions. So, would this new design or this new ink work on the cup, which is one of the things we're actually developing now? We don't know because the factory it's closed; they cannot open. Uh, will this client or customer love mm -hmm. this kind of uh, proposal we want to do? You don't know because actually you cannot meet because really yeah we can we try to have some meetings but it's completely different or anything which has actually 
a real contact with people or places, even logistical problems about how to set up a new event is completely stopped. So we do not, we lack empirical answers. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, this gives us a lot of a great push on the theoretical approach. So we, we make a lot of order in our processes and we ask a lot of beautiful questions that we never had the chance to ask because we have finally time and we, that's the only thing we can do. We can work basically about the theory <laughs> and about the, the theoretical R&D. Um, right. It's quite different, yeah. So that brings us to the second question about you know, things that work and things that do not work for you when you do things from home. So can you maybe list a couple of things on, on both sides of the equation? So mm -hmm. for me, it's, it's been a pretty much understanding of what time of day works best for me. When am I most productive? And for me, that's in the mornings. And that's good because I live in Los Angeles and I have a lot of clients on the East Coast. So I try to get a lot of my calls in in the morning because I know that will be I'm most productive in any ways. I get a lot more done. Um, and I, I like starting my day off very, very functional. So understanding what my most productive times are in my day for myself. Then it comes down to two other things. It's location and timing. So instead of allocating time um, or set, setting time away to finish a deliverable or to, to think more of the goal oriented, this has to get done. I tend to do more of, okay, I'm gonna spend two hours on whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be done by that time, but I wanted to spend this, this amount of time. And I find that because I'm not focused on the output as much and just focused on spending time on it, things get done a lot faster. And it's a lot less stressed toward me to when I don't make it or when I do make it sooner, it's even better. So it's more time allocation than it is focusing on a deadline or focusing on something that has to get done. The other part is space allocation. Uh, I work in my apartment now. I used to work in coffee shops and my apartment. And for me, having a location in my apartment where I can work only helps. I do not work at the kitchen table. I work at my desk. Um, but that also comes from the play of things that don't work for me. Um, working at my desk and then watching YouTube does not work for me. So things like, like those types of distractions, I really push those away to the other spaces. So that goes um, to my couch, that goes to my kitchen table. So I'm really trying to, to keep a space that is, is really allocated for, for working. And I, I think that's, that's been very helpful for me to get things done in a more productive sense from home alone or home and not working outdoors. Very interesting. So it sounds like you put a lot of thinking into the zoning uh, kind of uh, part and uh, deciding what is the best spot for doing work and what is the best spot for doing later. I think it's, it's been a very deliberate choice from my end to make sure I have a, a life space and a workspace within my space. Um, and right. for me, it's been helpful. I'm not sure that helped anybody else, but I think even building other types of habits, that would be helpful for others also. That's great. So Lorenzo, do you have any kind of special zones in your apartment? Absolutely. I, I do agree, actually. Uh, all my life has been like this. I have my desk where I work. Um, in, in previous houses and previous situations where I was living, Actually, I had the office of the lab where I was used to go, so I could actually uh, work outside in my desk in the office. Um, yeah, home, I, I actually, here, I have different spaces. I have the moment in which I watch news about coronavirus when I cook, and I'm cooking a lot. So I have the, the computer uh, set in the kitchen, so there is where I get informed about what's going on in the real world outside of my business. And I have this desk where I work. I have the another a uh, small couch where actually I read. That is where I go and read my books. And I really appreciate also to divide. Uh, it's natural for me like to not to read or to watch YouTube here on this desk, but move yeah. to, uh, to another place. Uh, it, it has always been like this uh, for me, at least in, in life. That's great. And uh, what are the couple of things that do not work? Uh, I think the, the teamwork uh, with, within our team is working well, but it doesn't work when you have other partners. Mm -hmm. So outside of a little team, it's really hard because, yeah, you can try to schedule calls, but it's not the same thing. Like when you do not have such a strong interaction, daily interaction or people which are really, really bound to and you understand each other, it's really hard. It could be a, a technical partner. It could be a business partner. It could be a customer. This is really tough for what I see. It's, it's uh, because there is no way to get closer. You cannot say, okay, but let's schedule a meeting where we actually sit spend some hours today to, to a day together actually to dedicate. So this is quite problematic. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, that's understandable. So uh, maybe taking a slightly kind of a lighter turn here, guys. So what was something that surprised you most about this experience so far, Kim? I, I think it's gonna be that's like a two part. One is for my friends and, and family and, and, and networks, how much they are or are not affected 
Um, there are some people in, in my friends group that I, I know I have to look out for a bit more right now. And so on that hand, some of the ones that surprised me, some of the ones that didn't. Um, so that, that's a part I think is really important because that, that, that friends group component for me is, does kind of extend towards my business contacts and my networks. And also being aware that some of my friends may or may not need some extra attention. Also means some of my business networks may or may not need some extra attention. So how people are dealing with that situation has surprised me. What also surprised me is, um, and that goes to one of your questions later on, what do you learn from this for yourself or about yourself, is that this month I've spent more time on business development um, and really following up on those relationships more than I've done billable hours compared to last month. Mm, and that's awesome. consultant, so billable hours are important. <clears throat> um, but the part I, that surprised me is that I was okay with this. Looking at what this month has been, has been so far for my contacts, for my family, for my friends, I'm okay with taking that cut of billable hours to make sure everybody's okay. And I didn't expect that I'd be that okay with, with that difference. That's great. Sounds like you are kind of using this situation to, to, you, to your advantage. And yeah, I can, I can attest to the notion of billable times in consulting. That's, that's really important, as well as the balancing out between delivery and sales. Uh, Lorenzo, what about you? So what was the biggest surprise for you? Um, let's say for the business side, the strongest uh, surprise, but it, we, it was already there, but we discovered that as a team, we are super strong. So we can actually work from remote because we know exactly what we are doing. We know how to allocate time to actually share ideas and decide how to operate. And then the execution is perfect. So I think it's, in some respects, even better than being here because we not we do not interfere one each other because it's one big open space. So in some sense, it was a very good revelation that we are a very good team. We are strong. We don't need to reinforce each other. We are really dedicated and we were efficient even by our own with slightly short timing in which actually we we interact and it's very good. And also on the social and global scale, it's incredible to see. For me, uh, the empathy that you get from all the networks that you have in your life. So I'm really, it's one of the periods of my life in which I'm more connected to my friends from all over the world. We talk a lot, we have dinners together from remote with my family. With uh, Actually yesterday there was a graduation of my cousin and all my cousins were all together in Skype, which is it's not to be taken for granted. I, I for mm. sure would not have gone to, to Turin to another city to watch the graduation live. And uh, so it's really, powerful and also on the national level i've never seen except for the world cup italians feel so italian really like, yeah it's crazy that you see flags on the windows in italy <laughs> we are anarchists like we don't care about the nation but in this situation we feel italian it's crazy <laughs> Love it. uh, Kim, do you see uh, californians being more californians these days i i do and i don't um i think the media is in a, a really poor job at um, showing what California is like right now. And I'm in Los Angeles, I can't speak to the rest of California, but there are a lot of us who do stay home and we, we are very, very diligent about that. And a lot of the media reports now in the LA Times are, oh look, all these young people are going to the beach. All these people are going on hiking trails. And I think that's a misunderstanding of what's actually happening. I think there is a lot more um, solidarity with this process right now, at least in Los Angeles and at least among my friends group, my networks in Los Angeles and my neighborhood. I can't speak too much beyond that, but yeah, it, it definitely resonates. We don't have flags in the windows yet. Um, uh, I don't know who would deliver those at this point because everything's pretty much on lockdown. Um, but I, I love that Italy is doing that. That makes me feel really nice. That's a great point. So um, any uh, fun stories or any anecdotes uh, that like happened in your life, in your interaction with with people like setting the memes aside. I, I think that we had plenty of those uh, in Twitter and other channels. So I, I'm trying to fish for some outstanding stories that you maybe haven't shared yet with, uh, uh, with the community. I, I think in my case, it's mainly just the, the general working from home idea that a lot of people don't fully understand, which is fine, it, it's different for everyone. Um, but that I, I'll hop on um, conference calls with people around the world. And of course, different time zones for them, but because I like to plan them in my morning also because of the time zones they're often in. Yeah. Even when it's their evening or afternoon, I'll hop onto a, a teleconference call and always say good morning, because it's morning for me. And that's something that I keep getting wrong the entire time. And it's just, it's too early in the morning to get the time zone right. It's early enough for me to be productive. Yeah. Um, so that happens a lot. And then a lot of my friends tend to ask, um, because a lot of these, these um, conversations are on Skype or on Zoom, or you only it's not part of people like, are you really wearing pajama pants or not? I get that question a lot. I will not answer that question, but I get the question a lot. 
Lorenzo, how about yourself? Well, I think the, the funny thing that happens here is that uh, I live in an actual, basically, basically in a neighborhood which was once a factory, one big factory. So it's close neighborhood. So um, we feel like in a village and there is a lot of housing like, like mine, my unit of a lot of young people mainly. And last weeks were actually beautiful days, like it was super sunny and amazing. So after two, three weeks that we couldn't go out and do sports on Sunday, we were all in the central area of this neighborhood, everybody doing like his own, like recreating his own hobby. So I was climbing on, a, on an old wall with my climbing shoes and I was trying to find some, some creams to actually climb and uh, have sport. Another, all in the distance of 10 meters each because, you know, to keep distance. Some of them with a mask also, I, I don't have, do not have one, but uh, another one doing jog, uh, jog running, another one playing tennis on the wall. So it was like a playground in the center of this building because you cannot go to the gym, you cannot go to anywhere. So we recreated our own hobbies all together in this neighborhood, which was yeah. really funny. So while, while we are on this topic, so uh, what else have you found out about yourself, aside from the ability just to climb uh, random walls? <laughs> about myself? Um, by myself is that I actually I am I am built for R and D, so it is one of the most productive times I have in my life, and I am enjoying it so much because I cannot take care. I do not have to take care about a lot, a lot of about a lot of operations, which are daily operations that you do when the world is working. That is not for me. I prefer to sit hours and hours in learning how to build a specific prototype on a software, or actually thinking about a specific project that I need to. To proceed working and this is what i'm good at that is the best thing that i can do and i know it because i enjoy doing it now wow that, best time to that's do. fantastic it sounds like you're reconnecting with your professional self yeah in a sense yeah it could be that's great uh kim back to you how about you what what uh, have you found surprising uh about yourself uh in this in this current environment so i, I didn't really realize until lorenzo just gave his answer that he's built for r d i'm built for bd and I've been in the R&D space for a very long time. Um, so I think that that, that that social component, that networking, that um, tending to other people's needs, seeing them, whether they're social or business oriented, um, that that suits me. And I think that that's something that, thanks to Lorenzo's answer, I, I feel like, yes, that, that's something that I have realized. Also, I think the link to what Lorenzo mentioned to going back to previous hobbies. I used to be a ballroom dancer. I didn't realize I was still part of my life, but now, not when I'm bored, but when I want to move around my house, I will be dancing. I didn't realize that's something that would come back to me also. So I guess uh, our, our previous selves are, are coming through again. <laughs> that's interesting. I, I, I think we, we, we are seeing this uh, surge of uh, uh, home dancing uh, pretty much everywhere in, yes. in these situations. And I, I suspect that we'll have a lot of career transitions <laughs> after this, this thing is done. Uh, okay, uh, a couple more questions because I think we'll, we'll, uh, we want to open it up to, uh, to, to the audience. Um, so, so we talked a little bit about the zoning. So what else helps you guys to uh, maintain a deep focus, uh, to, to do the deep work uh, under the constraints? So I, I think for me, it, it's been, it's, and it's still a learning process. I'm not saying that I'm there yet. Uh, removing distractions, obviously. So YouTube goes to the kitchen table, does not go to my work desk, um, but also allocating time and often starting with a project that I love. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that would basically be if I have to um, develop a, a, a scientific pipeline for a company and I really look forward to it, I'll put out two hours for that or put down two hours for that and just kind of get into that. Something that really engages me, I'll start there. And then after two hours, if there's no deadline, I'll stop there and take on something else I, I needed focus for that I wasn't looking forward to um, because I kind of follow them still in that type of zone. So building on something that I am engaged in, I really want to finish, I want to be yeah. working on it, will be something that will help me get into other projects thereafter also. Wow, that sounds very interesting. I kind of countered to this one of the approaches to uh, managing your task list by starting with the most difficult task first and then kind of going down the line. But actually, I can relate to this better. I feel that I'm in the same in the same group who kind of benefits for from doing something engaging, and then it kind of helps me to uh, get up to speed, so then I can uh, to handle something that I less uh, like about my work. Lorenzo, yeah. how about yourself? So what's? Oh, sorry, Kim. I think the difference is also looking at something that's engaging versus difficult. Um, uh -huh. I, I if it's difficult, and I don't feel like it. 
forget about it. If it's yeah. simple, I'll feel like I forget about it. If it's engaging in a way that it, it interests me and I, I want to deliver on this, I want to dig in, it makes me so right. creative, that's where I want to start. Got it. Thank you. Lorenza, how about yourself? What's, uh, what's your tips for uh, doing the deep work? Mm, usually I start the day with, um, I have here like a kind of a schedule about what, how I kind of uh, structure my days. Uh, at the beginning of each day, I understand and I decide what is the most, I, I basically a factor of importance and urgency. So what is very urgent to do, even if it's a very simple thing, and as compared to what is most important to do, and I kind of try to make these things first. So I try to finish the things that I can already take care of and then have the free part of the day. And then as for myself, I never had this problem about focusing. So I, I work too much. I work always I, because it's exciting for me. So it's kind of a no CD thing, I think, that mm -hmm. I, I, I have fun. Like I don't need to actually, ah, no, I got distracted again. I need to go back to do right. something productive. I'm always productive. My challenge is actually to decide uh, to, to keep, keep, keep track of how much time I have invested in a specific activity because I have many activities and projects. So one, the, my tip is actually to um, build a schedule on the week saying, okay, on Tuesdays, I take care about cash flow updating for an hour and a half from 3.30 to 5. And then on Thursday, I update the project status on this type of project in the morning for one hour. And I try to stay in this schedule so that I know at least how much time I have invested in a specific area because I was forced to. Then what is not in the schedule, it's really hard to track because I can work up until two in the night and be completely focused. Uh, yeah, really so just to double click on this practice. So when you set this, uh, let's say objective for yourself to spend one hour and a half uh, doing uh, something around finance, so how do you make sure that you stay within one hour and a half? Do you use a calendar? Uh, do you set an yeah, alarm? I usually, yeah, I have the clock on the computer. So I work and I try, I mean, it's, it's not easy because especially now when you have a lot of time, because now I have much uh, greater time to use is I have nothing compelling to say, okay, now I have to skip to something else. Well, usually in my daily life, my daily routine, I have to run for a meeting with a lawyer. Then I have to go to meet a customer, then a call with a partner. So actually I do not have time. But again, I try also in this situation to keep track of how much time I have located for a specific uh, mm -hmm. activity. I try to, uh, sometimes I, I just go over it or sometimes I finish earlier because now I don't have much cash flow to update, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that helps in, in some way. Um, so that, that sounds great, guys. So that kind of brings me to an penultimate question for, for today. And this is about uh, what are you going or you think you will be doing differently when things go back to new normal? Well, that's a little bit tricky. I haven't actually thought about that one too much yet. I think that I'm going to try to stay on top of the contacts that I've been basically building right now. Um, that, that's part of it. I think the other parts also allowing myself to sacrifice billable hours for other parts of business that are important more in the long run. So the BD component, um, building relationships there, following up with people. I, I was happily surprised that, that that cut in billable hours this month didn't phase me much. I was almost a little bit proud of it that, oh, that happened, but I know why that happened. Um, so maybe taking that mindset forward. Sounds great. So I like the idea of following up on this uh, kind of opportunity that we sort of had to reconnect with, uh, with others and do business development and I would say relationship building in general. That's, uh, that's great. Thank you. And Lorenzo. Um, for me, what I will bring out of this coronavirus, I think it will be the, I will try to substitute a lot of meetings with emails or video calls because in some respects you can do it and it saves a lot of time and fuel and CO2 in the atmosphere to go out with your car to meet people when it's not necessary. And it's very important that at least in a country like Italy, which is not really digital, we had to learn this. So it seems like 65% of the activities now open in Italy are working in telework, which is hmm. amazing. Like. Uh, it's a revolution. So I will try to work on this revolution even after because it's really saving a lot of energies for all, the, all of us. And on the other hand, I will try to spend much more time meeting physically the people I have to meet, both in the business and in life, uh, because it seems like it's not to be taken for granted. And I really miss yeah. it in a sense. 
it's not uh, that's that, that that's for sure um okay and um going a bit deeper into that so using this situation as an opportunity so what are what new ideas that were sparked by this crisis uh have you been working on so i i've been because my, my background in being in academia for so long and not really working with entrepreneurs until about a year ago more intensely i didn't realize the big difference between mindsets and I love working with entrepreneurs now because they're so proactive for getting things done. So as one of my friends, he's a financial consultant in Los Angeles, also an entrepreneur, and he has been actively for the past month trying to get COVID-19 tests that are in Singapore as a surplus into Los Angeles for testing. Mm. And that type of mindset of just, no, just do it. You can do it. Um, or why wouldn't you do it? I think it's something I will definitely take from this that I want to be even more embedded in at least the LA-based entrepreneur uh, community and to be a little more proactive in that space. Um, I didn't see that as such a big difference between academia initially, but no, academics are very different in terms of mindset um, and that I really love being in this entrepreneurial space a lot more. I think the proactivity is, is amazing. Well, that's great. Thank you, uh, Lorenzo. I, I know that you have something special. So since uh, since we discussed that on multiple occasions before, and uh, please tell us. Yeah, actually, we had some ideas um, that now became a, kind of a campaign or a period of our life as a company and as people, which we called Quarantine, which means in Italy here, run 10. So you run 10 times. So we run 10 things that we are Assessing this is kind of an exercise for us to actually make sense of this time by using this 10 in the quarantine <laughs> activity. Um, but the, the first two we got are very interesting. The first one is to actually create through our cup and our application diffused parties. So we are trying because the factories are closed, so it's really hard, but we are trying to produce specific cups for the coronavirus period to send them uh, to the people that will join the, the party and link inside the, the functions that we have in the app uh, a way to be connected in like in a festival. So we are building basically festivals that will start in a specific time with a specific lineup and you will access them through our cup. And mm -hmm. there are gonna be DJs, uh, people, uh, barmen teaching you how to make cocktails in the cup. There are gonna be theater performances. There are gonna be people connecting, doing mainly art or creative creative activities. And it's really challenging because we have to deal with a situation in which there is no shipping. The Most of the factories are closed. So the really manufacturing our product is not easy anymore. So we're really struggling and we're pushing to the mill, to the limit our supply chain. And the second project is even more interesting for us because we started analyzing the situation and we realized that we are all locked in the houses all of us, but the only thing we look for, like we think is what we're doing next. When is going to finish? What, we cannot say what, do I, what I want to do now this weekend. We say, what we're going to do after coronavirus and we don't know when this is going to happen. So our trajectory about the fun things is so far away. And the main thing about after the, the after coronavirus is going out and drink and having fun with people, our business. So we realize that we are look, the world is looking for something that we can provide them in a few months. Second of all, the venues that are usually hosting us in our, where we work are closed and they're about to die. A lot of our, a lot of our customers are dying because they have to pay expenses, but they have no income. And the third thing is that would be nice if I could already buy uh, for cheaper the drinks I'm gonna drink in three months. So what we are doing now is basically turning our app, which is already on the store, into a crowdfunding tool so that I can download the app, buy now 10 drinks for after the coronavirus for two euros, for three euros, and we as Pickup, we're gonna move these euros to the venue so that you will not need to go to the bank if you can, or it will not fail. So it's basically a way to pre-sell drinks, so to save venues and make us having even more fun after the, the venue with cheaper. And this is really challenging because we have to work hard on the software uh, engineer part without any feedback from the user. So we don't have the empirical uh, feedback of saying, okay, I like this feature as we always do. So it's all a theoretical work. We try the mock-up, we see we like it, we develop it, tough. Lorenzo. 
I, I absolutely love that. I think it'd be really cool if you can add a component of um, buying around already now for your friends. So I don't want to buy my own drinks. I want to buy a drink for a friend of mine who's having a hard day today and they can cash that in months from now or weeks from now or hopefully days from now. Absolutely. Actually, we already have this feature for the instant drinks. So uh -huh. now the usage of pickup is that you are in the venue. I see the people. I can find you and send you a drink. And exactly this is the up, an upgrade of the basic feature of the crowdfunding will be I buy my own or I buy you the drink. And it's a pre-sell. Again, it's not an order. It's a really pre-sell. And the money that I sent, the drink I, sold, I, I sent you gave the money to the venue, which is really important because it's our market. We know it is our industry. And it's tough. One month without work in the summer, in spring, summer, a lot of them are dying. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. That's amazing. It looks like uh, this situation handed you a bunch of lemons and then you're kind of finding yourself in the food retail business now, <laughs> which is great. Okay. I think that uh, pretty much covers the first half of, of today's of today's meeting. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you, Lorenzo. So right now we'll be moving to the Q&A session and uh, I'm handing it over to Rich to uh, to take uh, to take to take the control. Yeah, I think um, it'd be great. To, there's a whole lot of uh, folks on here who are um, uh, business owners or entrepreneurs themselves. So I'm really interested to hear what everybody thinks about what Kim and Lorenzo are doing. Um, I know I, I was writing down some thoughts in my head that kind of like Kim, when you're talking about having the spaces um, to work in, that's something that I, I definitely did here at the studio I had certain spaces where I do certain parts of work. Um, and at home, I have a, a, a home office, but it's, I have nowhere near, you know, set up those spaces there like I have here. And I, I think for me, that's something that's really valuable. And I'm wondering if anybody else uh, here on the chat does the same thing. Um, I've got um, an office and um, I literally have that space um, dedicated to working. Um, I can lock the door. Um, to, to relate to anything else that's been discussed, um, I have four children. So this has been quite a challenging time for me because I'm at home trying to work with four children aging, uh, ranging from the ages of 12 to two. So um, whilst I can sh unlock the door and trap myself away in this office space, um, it can be quite challenging to say the least because I've got them banging on the door and mom can I have this, mom can I have that? Um, and it, yeah, so it, it's, been, it's been good. I'm, I'm also quite productive in the morning um, and I've been finding that I, I'm getting up earlier um, so that I can get up, go downstairs before anybody else is awake and spend that time, um, mm. you know, being productive. Um, so that's really, really been helping me. And uh, like with what um, Kim said, um, I start with things that, that fill my cup, basically. So I start with my morning gratitude. That's my first thing that I do just to get my um mindset in the right space to then be productive and be grateful for the things around me that I have right now rather than the things I don't um so that's something that I really really you know I start with my gratitude in the morning then I write a little bit of a journal about how I'm feeling any emotion so I'm kind of getting anything that's going on in my head because at the moment I don't know about anybody else but I felt like I've been on a bit of a roller coaster in my mind with everything going on and it's all been so quick and I, I can't really put any reason to why things are happening so I've got a lot of whirling around in my head so if I journal it out I'm kind of just brain dumping um, and that helps me then process um, and understand things a bit better so that then I've kind of left that to one side and then I can be productive with whatever needs to be done. Um, so they're my kind of, you know, that's where I'm at at the moment um, with, with doing what we're doing. Um, we have a, a holistic academy network, so we're in the holistic side. Um, Helen, I think, is also on here as well. Helen Bartram is one of my business partners. Um, so ours is networking. So obviously we haven't been able to network 
um, you know, face to face. Now I'm very much a connection person. I like that physical connection. So I've struggled quite a bit because I miss that so, so much right now. Um, however, it's been good in terms of there's been things that we needed to get done, but because we're so wrapped up and so quick and we wanted to go so fast with everything, we've got so wrapped up in the physical and actually being productive elsewhere in other parts of the business. So more online, getting online platforms set up, getting um, content onto those online platforms we've been able to do. So that's been quite good. We've set up other groups and things as well. So, and we've opened a space up for people to um, share how they're feeling, share their emotions that they're feeling at this time. Um, so, we're, we're at the moment we're currently just con concentrating on nurturing those people right now so that they see the value that we have to give because we're giving them um solutions to how they're feeling and the situation that they're in so that when things pick up and go back to normal um you know they'll will be in the forefront of their mind because we've helped them through their emotional state at this time so that when it comes to going back to how things were or not were, whatever, um, we can then, they'll be thinking, right, okay, I need to progress further with, with these people because they've helped me through such a challenging time. And I don't know how I would have got through that part, you know, without those. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Natalie, is that, um, with your, your family, are they more, um, I guess, do they understand about you having to work and, and closing yourself off and stepping away from Yes, them? They, they do. Um, obviously, Teddy is my youngest. He's two, and he's still very, very needy. I mean, I, I, I work anyway with him um, at home, and I do homeschool my eldest anyway. Um, the only difference has been the other two, so the two middle children are off. Um, and it's been trying to get to grips with having all those ages together because Toby who's homeschooled already has a routine um Teddy who's just joined me so you'll have to excuse me has um <laughs> has uh, sorry about this yeah this is the challenge this is this is how it is real life so um it's just getting to grips with um having everybody doing their routines together at once um and mastering that luckily i have my husband home because he works away he works on the oil rigs um and he's home right now so he's been quite good at distracting the children while i've been able to concentrate on doing bits and pieces that i've needed to but yeah it's been challenging i'm not going to lie but equally whilst it's been challenging I've thoroughly enjoyed it and secretly mm -hmm. I've really been craving mm -hmm. this internal um isolation for quite some time so it's it's actually helped me in a personal way as well so yeah it's been good on that on that note there's one thing that uh the brought up um Hi. earlier and that was getting away from thinking about what's happening right now and what's good what are you going to do next what's going to happen in the future i know i found myself for the longest time with my own business i get very stuck in the weeds about you know just trying to pay the bills trying to get the, the jobs in that they're going to yeah. pay for them and not dedicating that time to um you know the the future plans like what is going to happen where what where is the shift going to be um does anybody else have, have you done that shift and, and thinking about that more or are you still kind of stuck in I have to pay my bills to, for my you know my office or whatever it is I can I can jump in a little bit there Rich uh, from our perspective you know with uh, communicate like brand design and web design communications and we're sort of looking towards the future and thinking well how does the sort of coronavirus how is that going to affect communications on a number of levels you know, firstly um, sort of crisis communications. We sort of reached out to some of our clients to talk to them about, can we be of assistance? You know, a lot of projects are put on hold from a marketing standpoint. 
but you know, can we help you with your social media communications, putting up graphics for your social media to talk about what your response is? And then sort of moving beyond that, how is that gonna change for us as designers? Is that gonna change even from purely an aesthetic standpoint, how people are communicating, how brands are gonna position themselves, how companies are gonna to talk to their customers now? You know, is there gonna be a, you imagine there's gonna be a cultural shift, right? It, political, cultural, everything. So sort of how can we sort of help companies in that way and sort of change our business model a little bit to sort of take that into account. I also, and I also have a middle schooler <laughs> who's wandering around in the background. Ah, yeah. so, <laughs> so I've, I've noticed that actually the amount of uh, video conferences I've been on with companies where there are multiple children <laughs> in the background and no one seems to bat an eyelid is uh, maybe that will be a cultural change as well for everyone. Yeah, bring your kid to work. Okay. <laughs> the, um, Matt, um, have you seen in your line of work in, in design, have you seen an uptick in work? Has it stayed steady, steady? Or, and a second question, have clients relayed to you their concerns about how um, they're planning to market themselves or brand themselves in the future? Yeah, I think definitely uh, we sort of evened out. There's a lot of projects put on hold, like, you know, this is coming, you know, for our clients, this is coming from the top, you know, we can't spend any money. We don't know what's going on. So we're not gonna, you know, those three projects we had lined up, they're on pause, we'll get back to you. Um, but then there are other companies where they, yeah, they are approaching us and saying like, how are we gonna, you know, how do we communicate this? Can you help us out with this sort of stuff? You know some graphics for our email that's going out and things like that. In terms of long-term, how that's changing, I think that's yet to be seen. I think it feels like sort of the world collectively is sort of holding its breath and it sort of that sort of is going to pan out probably over the next few months. So it's probably even, our business is probably pretty even. I'd say where we have gaps, where we have spare time, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I'm a big fan of the Headspace app. So sort of follow on from Natalie, I do a lot of mindfulness, but also we're using it as an opportunity to sort of grow our skill set as well. So me and my business partner are both where we have downtime and now trying to use that to sort of, okay, I'm going to learn this skill online that I don't yet have and I want to build and actually position us. Oh, now our breadth of service is going to be even bigger. Yeah, that's, that's a big thing that I've heard with quite a lot of people actually that, um, are trying to stay positive in all this is that just building those skills, having that time to actually build those skills and work on um, the self as well. Um, I know there's one thing I was thinking about too, as we were talking, um, Kim and Lorenzo were talking and just about, um, Lorenzo, you talked about kind of your supply chain and um, it also made me kind of think about our own company expenses. And I know James, you had posted something online earlier about reevaluating re subscription services, you know, all these little services that kind of pile up over time. Um, uh, I'm just wondering if people have done that dive into their own um, businesses on a financial level. Me or to James? Wait. Rich, you're on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. So I missed what you said, Lorenzo. Look, I what we see in, in our environment here in, in Italy and in our industry is that the short-term activities, which means, of course, live events or venues, completely uh, stuck. Like we, we can't plan or operate on any short-term activity. We had to cancel, not we, but the organizers had to cancel a lot of sport events and cultural events. Mm, we see, on the other hand, that on the on the long run, on the long run, the big clients keep working, and actually, it could be actually a good moment to work with them because this crisis is going to pass. So everybody knows; they don't know when. But if we have some projects which are like termed in terms of six months, one year projects, and actually, there we can keep working um, in terms of actually com um, commercial contact. I don't know about R&D. We are very strong in our own R&D. And uh, of course, it's a good moment to do R&D. I don't know about other companies or other uh, our customers if they're actually investing to 
increase their skill sets or actually to invest really for R&D projects. This, I don't know. I think you have to be very brain. We are lucky because we are very small and we do not have fixed costs yet. We are very cheap. We have a very low burn rate. So we can, we can afford ourselves to, to invest uh, with the little that we have. But I'm sure that for bigger companies, it's not that easy because they have already paying a higher price of this shutdown. I'd like to hop in on that if that's possible. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, because I'm working in the biotech space, the the supply chain right now has been very much altered. The R and D components are not being done in academia or in biotech generally, unless it's on COVID nineteen. So, there's been a very clear switch in the biotech space of what people are, are focusing on. Also, because a lot of the PPE that we're using, the personal protection equipment, is going to hospitals, which is a great thing to do. So I think in, in the biotech space, there's a different type of supply chain change, um, which has been definitely affecting our business or the businesses around me very much because R&D is not happening right now. We are, however, focusing on the paperwork components or planning out experiments, a lot of um, national and international grant deadlines for academic labs or for biotech companies uh, have been postponed also for that reason. So it's, it's a different type of shift um, because I think we're so close to COVID-19 and also being potential helping in COVID-19 um, um, prevention, understanding, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any, just uh, I have kind of two questions that I wrote down on the top of my head before we kind of wrap things up or move things to open questions or whatever, but um, does anybody have any tricks that they use to manage their time uh, or picked up on things that Camilo Lorenzo said? I, I know for me personally, I thought I would have more time, but I end up just running out of time every day. And I, I don't know why that is, but I, think yeah. I can I can jump in real quick on just very quickly. I I'm a big fan of Pomodoro technique. I don't know if some people do that. So the 25 minutes on, five minutes off, four times, and then a half hour break. So I'm a big fan of that. That's a great one. So I learned about Pomodoro technique from uh, from a course on Coursera, uh, learning about learning, and uh, I I really enjoyed like the way they structured it. And they gave a lot of helpful tools uh, like, like the Pomodoro technique. And since a lot of people are trying to uh, ramp up their skills, <laughs> uh, consider this one. I, I think it's one of the, uh, the, the, the most popular one uh, on, on Coursera. I do, I do a similar thing with uh, not the Pomodoro, but I have a time tracker that's on my, my laptop. And I, where I found that I, I get stuck is that you know I'll switch tasks so quickly and this thing it seems kind of very cheesy but it works very well for me because i'm very easily distracted and, and, and um, things like that but it's a little device that when i turn it it uh it's set to different parts of my um you know what i need to do so if i'm doing editing i can turn it over and i can add a note about the client um, or doing emails or whatever but because it's so tactile it mm. just works really well personally for me where did you get it from, Rich? Uh, the, the magical power of Instagram uh, ads definitely attracted me to it. Um, just Instagram, it knew that I had issues with uh, time tracking, obviously, so. Uh -huh. And how, how do you call it? So how do people find it and you know order it through Amazon or whatever? I forgot what the name of it is. It's called Timular, so T-I-M-E-U-L-A-R. Um, and yeah. it also can link up to your other time uh, tracking software as well. So you can enter stuff in manually and um, then also use it physically. And I, yeah, I like it. It's good. Mm. Um, does, and the, another question that w was brought up earlier and, and Andre and I have been talking about this about, you know, how do you stay positive and are there any fun anecdotes or things that happen to you while, on, while working remotely? Um, I would love to hear what other people say, but I'll just say one of a story that happened to me was uh, when this was all kind of going down in um, here in, in Boston, at least I had a whole series of shoots lined up, but we had one here at the studio and um, the client was kind of ooming and aahing about whether or not we should do the shoot. And one of the suggestions that they thought of was that they would have um, all the, the contractors that were on the suit, so you know, our, our team, the crew, um, the talent, the stylists, all come to the studio and work while they would uh, direct remotely from Zoom. And 
I was like, I don't think that's going to work, but you know what? Why don't we do a test the day before? Because I'm pretty sure it wasn't going to work, and it did not work. It was terrible. But it, what it was is an opportunity to get the client on the call to talk about this. And there was five people on the call, including myself. And um, it was about 20, after we did this test, it was about 20 minutes of people saying, nobody wanted to be the bad person. You know, no one wants to call the shoot off. And um, everybody was very delicate about it until someone said that the shoot wasn't actually, um, there was no time um, deadline for the shoot. So it could happen anytime throughout the year. And I was like, all right, well, let's just cancel the shoot. And I noticed everybody just started, as soon as one person said, we're going to, let's cancel the shoot. Everybody followed canceling, canceling, canceling the shoot. And you could kind of like feel the relief that visually from everybody. Um, and also to end that call, because it was kind of, people were stressed out. I took the opportunity to kind of, uh, be goofy, I guess. And so I did the classic, you know, uh, I, I told him I installed the new escalator and did like the, <laughs> as I did that, I, um, I landed on my knee and just really hurt my knee. So I, <laughs> How many my knee was in pain and I just had to fake that I was like, um oh, yeah, yeah, I'll talk later. And afterwards I was in horrible pain from my little stupid camera stunt. But... <laughs> yeah, stunts are tricky, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has had, I don't know, a funny moment. And if not, that, that's fine. But I'm happy to share one. Um, so I'm so jealous of you guys all describing your um, very boundaried lives right now. Um, so I've got two children at home that I'm homeschooling and literally just try to sneak into a little corner and get work done as and when I can. Um, so I'm grateful the sun's shining because they're outside now. There is a risk that somebody might burst in any moment. So I will mute me again ASAP. Um, so uh, a couple of days ago, I decided that I was going to record a children's meditation. So I do a lot of work with children, um, like yoga, mindfulness, meditation. And I was debating whether to do a live or a recorded meditation. Um, so I went for the recorded meditation and I was so grateful for it because about one minute into the meditation, my little boy shouts from the bathroom, mom, can you come wipe my bum? And I thought, goodness, imagine if I'd have gone live with that. <laughs> So yeah, the struggle is real. <laughs> I, I think that the lovely thing about all of this is though, that there seems to be this level of, um, of understanding towards everyone because of the situation, there's more empathy about these things. Yeah. And I think we're all kind of cutting each other and ourselves more slack because of it. I, I know one of my clients um, reached out earlier this week, said, hey, Kim, how are, how are you doing? Like, do you have enough hours? Do you need more work kind of thing? Um, someone else, we, we missed a deadline, sort of. The deadline was pushed. And it's just like, oh, but of course you missed it now. It's no big deal. I think that that understanding towards each other and then for yourself is, is something that we're all learning or getting from this experience, I think is really great, also in a professional situation. Yeah, I, totally I, agree. Yes, I hope we, we are just getting more and more accept, accepting of each other's, you know, ourselves and, and, and the others, just seeing each other as a human being, right? Because in the in the office setting, we all kind of put up a persona. So we want to be seen as someone, right? So now that we don't have to pretend because we are at home, right? So there's a different code, I would say. So it's actually uh, producing a, I would say a healthier uh, environment somehow. It's a, it's a kind, of, kind, kind of a paradox, right? So we, we're living in this uh, sick time, but we are somehow getting getting healthier as a, as a society, I hope. That's, uh, I agree. I think we're starting to see each other as human beings and not just robots doing a job. Yeah, yeah totally. Uh, thank you. Thank yeah. you for sharing, guys. Anyone else would like to, to share? Because we, I think we'll have to, to wrap up uh, in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, I can tag on very quickly onto that, just to sort of the human side of things. I think one of our big clients is uh, in the travel industry. And so obviously they've, you know, they've, their entire year is gone. And we just reached out to them. We didn't even do the, like, we can help you with crisis communications or anything. We just said, hey, just thinking of you guys, like, in the travel industry, this is going to be a tough year. Like, we're, we'll be here when you're ready 
you know, when you're ready kind of thing. And like our direct contact wrote back, but even like the president of the company wrote back and was just like, yeah, you know, we're fine. We're going to get through this. But then sort of offered us advice like, hey, stay lean, stay small. We're all going to get through this together. And so it's a really interesting dynamic where you have sort of everyone sort of helping each other, you know, sort of supporting each other, just in, even from a sort of uh, sort of human side of it. That's wow. great. I, I actually uh, say one more thing. So um, I think it was it was the last year when I started using Zoom, where I actually, you know, uh, did the, the subscription for it um, because I needed to for one specific client. But then I began to use it through in my work for um, getting jobs and bids and communicating with potential clients. And I noticed um, a big change in the number of, of jobs that would we would actually get. And it made a big difference actually you doing this face-to-face -face communication versus over the phone. Um, and that's, it's, I guess something that I'm just going to continue to do. But one thing that popped in my head of what Matt was saying is that um, I actually might go to previous clients and talk about, see if I can sit down with them and ask, how did the shoots go? How did the project go? How did the, the whole um, the post-production go? And how can we do better in the future? Um, and I think that's kind of on the, the same level of, of there's time where they may have time now and you're involving them in, um, that you're thinking about the client and the client's thinking about you. And I think I'm also a communication coach for scientists. I think a really big part is what you touched on is really important is that building relationships, you can do much better visually than you can on a phone. Um, yes, in person is even better, but there's so much in, in, uh, in body language and, and even a tone and gaze of eyes that you can build on and communicate with that you can't do over the phone. Um, so I think, I think Zoom has been amazing in making sure that we can still build relationships and not just maintain them. That's great. Yeah. Um, does anybody else any have last question, last thoughts that they want to spew out there? <laughs> Lack of a better word. I think it's certainly been um, quite almost heartwarming seeing some of the companies that have responded um, where we've been fortunate and I think a lot of other businesses have been fortunate to be in a position to uh, extend the hand of help rather than just a commercial opportunity. So we're in a position to actually help a lot of people work from home uh, in, in a literal sense. So people who we tend to work with, small businesses, sole traders, micro businesses, are really struggling making that, that connection. And that's literally something we're able to do. We have lost probably all of the face-to-face -face training. So we have an abundance of time. And so we, we took it as an opportunity to say, do you know what? If we're all in this together, we can help with that. And, and, and that's just a very small piece. I, I've been looking at lots of other companies doing way bigger, better and, and impactful things. And I think just, you know, as I sit here in my little room, uh, banging on the window, wishing I could leave, like everyone else, I suspect, it's nice to see that, you know, we are in this together. So that's, that's been really nice to see. I would just like to thank all of you for participating. It's been the most illuminating and encouraging hour I've just spent listening to everybody. Um, I have a few comments. I've been working from home for a long time, way before it became fashionable. And the thing, and I work from home and had a small child as well. I found that the easiest thing to do first thing in the morning is get yourself into a routine, get dressed, don't hang around in your, in your jammies, um, get into a space that's designated for your work time. And as you, uh, all the other hints we've already talked about, but I have found this current time now is people are very much in need of hearing other people. And I'm spending my time reaching out to all our membership just to talk to them. And I find that people are calling me just because they want a human voice to, listen, to speak to. They know that I can't fix everything. But the fact that some people listening to you so very encouraged about the last comments about the fact that we were helping each other and helping each other. And as a final comment, I'd like to say, think about water. Water always finds a way of getting around obstacles one way or another. We're all going to get through this together. 
that we'll find a way through this, and I think it's going to be an and then society that's going to emerge out of all this. So thank you all for being there very much, and thank you, Richard, for putting this together, and thank you to our speakers. <laughs> thank you so much, Ursula. That's that's a great metaphor uh, with with water. So, Rich, what what do you say? Uh, shall we uh, call it a day? Yeah, I think so. I, uh, yeah, thank you everybody for um, being on the call. It, I, it benefited me, and I hope it helped everybody out, else out as well. Um, if it's okay with everybody, I would love to share the context to everybody who was on, on this call with each other. Um, that way, if you have any questions, you can all follow up with each other. Perfect. Thanks, so I'd like to it. thank you, our guests. Uh, thank you so much for, for making time for this and then sharing your expertise. I personally was learning a lot and making that a lot of, a lot of notes. And uh, I, I love that we are feeling more connected and we are learning from, from this experience together. And thank you guys for joining us and you know making it more interactive and, and sharing your experience. So it's it's much more fun this way. Let's uh, keep it up, and I hope we'll see each other soon in this format or the other format. But in any case, we'll stay connected. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Thanks everyone. Me. Thanks a lot. Wow. Have a good day. Have a good day, guys. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.